Hello, everyone. My name is Brandon Faulkner, and welcome to Village Court. Uh, uh, welcome to Village Court, where we live our mission, which is to connect, share, learn, and build intergenerational connections for mutual learning. This is a place where senior wisdom and youth tech minds join forces in order to bring you meetings like this. Today, we'll be talking about planning the perfect trip to Vegas and how you can do that. We'll be planning for both families and also if you want to go on an excursion by yourself or with a group of friends. Um, in order to have the perfect time. So first, in the beginning, we'll be planning a trip for you and everybody else who might be over the age of 21. Um, because Vegas is a gambling town, you uh, you obviously have to be 21 in order to gamble in the United States, especially in Vegas, as well as drink and other things like that. So planning the perfect trip to Vegas might include something like that. Here we have one of the hotel chains, which is the MGM uh, Grand um with their large hotel, um, with their large hotels, um, the MGM Grand Las Vegas, very notable hotels, very fancy hotels and all that good stuff. There's also places like the Bellagio. Um, there's places like um, Circus Circus. There's other places there as well. Depending on your price point and where you want to stay, this might be something that you consider when planning your trip to Vegas. So be sure to look in, look into all hotels that are on the Strip. That is the main place where everybody goes, which is the Las Vegas Strip, which is, which includes I think it's like a, I think it's roughly five miles um, of Strip that you can walk down. There's casinos, there's restaurants, there's bars. There's a lot of sightseeing to see there. There's things like the new sphere that's in place and there's other things to do. But here, looking at the MGM Grand uh, Las Vegas, we have a few different options. So let's say since my uh, since the end of my school year is coming up, let's say I wanna go to Las Vegas in the months of June. MGM Grand Las Vegas guests, let's say I'm bringing up to four guests. Let's find some rooms at the MGM uh, Grand Las Vegas. So here uh, we have a discount, you can say about the 15% off. And then here as well, we can see some flexible rooms as well. So the rough, the rough average is $1,212 per night. Of course, that's not gonna fit everybody's budget. So of course, if you do wanna go cheaper, there are other cheaper options within the strip that you can get, as well as hotels outside of the strip where you can just easily take an Uber into the strip and enjoy the same amenity, amenities there. So there's the advanced purchase, which is roughly $194 a night. There's the stay longer, save more, $50 um, food and beverage credit as well. This one will cost you a little bit more, but here we have a grand two queen beds. We have a grand two queen beds with a strip view. We have the exclusive king suite. We have the tower spa suite. We have the exclusive two queen suite. We have the tower one bedroom suite and a lot more options to choose from here. So since we're booking this for a total night, a uh, total of five nights, four guests, we can look at all these price points and what they might cost me. So let's say I want to go for the grand two with the queen with the strip view. If I were to add that to my cart, what we can see now is that it's loading, it's processing, and here we can see that um, the, the price display is not guaranteed for 30 minutes. So essentially what that means is if I take my time on this, it will not necessarily allow me um, to book under the same price that's showing me now. So the subtotal will be $1,725. Of course, I can add things on there like a dog-friendly room um, where you can bring your pet Guaranteed early check-in, guaranteed like checkout, overnight guest uh, self-parking. So if somebody comes with you, that overnight get uh, that overnight guest parking is there. Um, special requests as well. Um, you can add that all on there and more. And then once you're done, you'll continue shopping and then finish your finish what you want to buy um, <clears throat> by going to their checkout. For some reason right now, it's not taking me to the checkout page, but essentially what will happen next is you'll specify who's coming, who will be paying for the room, you'll type in your credit card information, all that other good stuff, and then you'll be set on your way to go. So the MGM Grand is here for anybody who wants to stay. There's a casino. If you're planning to play any uh, casino games, you can get rewards. There's the best rates, there's slots, there's poker. There's the best bet on the strip. There's whiskey down. Um, there's uh, sports betting as well. There's Vegas slots. There's other things as well, like table games, casino hosts. And then there's also a market limit and things like that. So if you're somebody who wants to go to Vegas in order to bet uh, a certain amount of money that you have, 
you are certain you uh there's certainly enough options to do that you don't even have to necessarily stay in a hotel in order to use their casino what you just have to do is walk in with whatever money you have take it gamble a few times you either win you lose you take it you'd be happy you'd be sad whatever whatever fits your needs but keep in mind there are other excursions as well there are also dining uh, there's also dining so the dining includes things like american food asian food desserts and coffee french italian mexican steakhouse and a lot more there's also the best restaurant the best las vegas restaurants like um like the International Smokehouse um, and other places like that. If you're looking for something like breakfast, a lot of the, these hotels do include breakfast as well. Um, if, if you want lunch, you can order lunch, dinner, happy hour, 24 hour meal service, which means they'll bring it to your room or you can go down and get it. Late night snacks, you can order takeout as well and other things like that. And this typically comes with a lot of other, um, a lot of other uh, hotels on the strip. So if I pull up Google Maps currently and we take a take a look at the Las Vegas Strip uh, and we go here, let's take a quick look. So if we take a look at the Las Vegas Strip, essentially what we have here is a big view of everything. So essentially, when you first arrive in Vegas, you'll be arriving at the uh, at the international airport here. Um, which the international airport will take you from a car service in paradise in order down in order to get down. There are shuttles included with a lot of these hotels. You can request one to your hotel at whatever moment. They will have a uh, stand at the at the hotel uh, at the hotel um, drop offs uh, or at the airport drop off where you can get a shuttle down to your hotel um, and stay at all these different hotels. So the hotels include the Flamingo Las Vegas. Um, there's the, there's the Wynn Las Vegas, uh, there's the Encore Las Vegas, Caesars Palace, a lot, of, a lot of the big names that people know. Um, there's other things as well, like there's, um, Park MGM Las Vegas, um, the Excalibur Hotel and Casino, there's the Luxor, there's the Mandalay Bay. There's all these different hotels and more that a lot of people know and that are all ranging from different price points. So it's depending on what you want to do with your time in Las Vegas. If you don't necessarily want to stay on the Strip, there are also hotels that are around here. Like there's the uh, Orleans Hotel and Casino. There's the Hilton Vacation Club Desert um, Retreat Las Vegas. And then there's also hotels further out. Like the one that I currently stayed at when I went to Las Vegas, it was right down the street from the, uh, it was right down the street from the Strip. Um, and it was called the... I think it's called the Hilton, the Hilton something, um, uh, the yeah, the Hilton something, um, where I stayed when I went to Vegas. Um, there's also MGM Grand, other things like that. There's the University District. There's a lot of other things to do in Vegas as well. If you're looking for fun other things to do other than uh, gambling and drinking and being on the strip and partying, um, there are some activities that you can do on the strip. Like there is. Um, There's the option with one of the hotels to take a boat tour through the man-made uh, lake that they have or the man-made river that they have. Um, there's also the option to see the Bellagio Hotel and Casino's fountains, the world famous fountains that they have that dance uh, to different lights and different music. There's also the ability to um, jump off a building. Um, you have the option to bungee jump off of built. I don't think it's bungee jumping. It's uh, you're you're doing some event off of a building um, where you're attached to a rope and you're then you're jumping off. There's also a zip line on one of the hotels. There is a um, There is a roller coaster on top of the hotel that will take you to the edge of the hotel and then drop you backwards. So you basically look over the edge and then you drop back down. Um, that's on the strip. There's also the ability to uh, eat dinner in a rotating restaurant, which gives you a 360 degree aerial view of the Las Vegas Strip while you enjoy a nice meal. Um, there's also a lot of different golf places that you can try out. Um, there's things like Top Golf, which is highly rated. Um, it is a driving range where you go. It's kind of like bowling, but golf. Um, there's a lot of fun things to do. Um, inside of the airport itself, if you want to get your gambling uh, in early, you can stop by the you can stop by the slot machines within the hotel 
or if you're going back and you're traveling back to where you came from, um, once again, you'll have the option to bet even more money within the within the um, airport. So whatever money you lost at these um, Las Vegas casinos, you can make it right back in the in the airport um, and you can be on your merry way. There's also other things to do in Vegas as well. So now that we've completed the um, events that people over the age of 21 can do, we can now get into the events that the families can do. So one of the things that is unique about Vegas is there is a uh, is there there is a uh, hotel that is dedicated to making sure that families can have fun. It's called Circus Circus Hotel and Casino. Circus Circus Hotel and Casino prioritizes itself towards both kids and family members and, and older adults. So essentially what you can do at Circus Circus is you can not only bet, but there's also a kids section. It's essentially a massive Dave and Busters within the hotel where your kids can go around, use their card, just like a casino, um, and go around playing their games that they like. They have things like um, Crossy Road. They have things like... Um, they have other games as well, like um, the claw machines. They have a ton of other stuff within the hotel, as well as the ability to watch different shows. So what these different shows include is different magic shows, different trapeze shows, different circus shows, other things like that within Circus Circus, within Circus Circus Las Vegas. There's also the ability for parents to gamble and drink as well. Of course, kids can't do this. Um, but there is that option for you guys. And Circus Circus is one of those places that has a lot of different things for your child to do if they want to have a little bit of fun on the a little bit of fun on the strip as well. There's also other things that the kids can do, like eating dinner in the revolving restaurant, as I mentioned. There's the um, there's the roller coaster as well. Um, there's things like Top Golf. Um, off the top of my head, I, there's a few other things, but off the top of my head, I do not remember what they are. Um, but there's a lot of opportunities for kids to have fun as well um, within the Vegas, uh, within the Vegas circuit and within the strip. There's also other things that you can do outside of Vegas, like you can go to different museums. There's also a museum. There's also a ton of museums actually right on the strip that you can go to. Um, there is the most notable one right now is the giant sphere in Las Vegas that is comprised of a ton of different lights. There is a museum within that that you can explore. And it's also a good, good place to watch different shows um, and other things like that. Recently, U2 played there um, and other bands uh, have played there as well. Um, and you can book a show, um, you can see what's happening there. And then there's also other shows that are going on um, within all the different casinos at all different times as well. Um, like, I forgot what, I forgot what her name is, but there's a, there's a show, um, there's, there's shows regularly happening all the time there. Um, no matter what you can get show, they all cost different prices, but there is the ability um, to do to watch all these different shows and all these different things. Um, there's also the ability of shopping. The Strip has a ton of different shops. Um, these can include places like Sephora. Um, these include other places like other fancy, uh, there's fancy stores as well, like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, all that good stuff that is there. You can go around, you can spend some money on shopping, you can gamble a little bit, you can make more money. Um, you can send your kids to Circus Circus to go have fun. And if you're somebody who is traveling with an RV or a camper van or anything like that, there actually is um, a place for you to hook up right next to Circus Circus. So there is a campground that you can go to, you can hook up everything that you need and enjoy um, the strip right there um, where you can hook up and then you can walk the strip from that RV park um, and then go have some fun as well. Other things outside of the strip include going to things like the Atomic Bomb U Museum, since Nevada is very big on their military and the uh, Atomic Bomb, that is where Oppenheimer um, uh, did his first nuclear test. Um, there's also places like, um, there's also places like, uh, what was it? 
Oh, there's also places like Shelby American, uh, the Shelby American Museum, where you can go look at fancy cars that, sh that uh, Carol Shelby built. There's also other museums as well that are around there that you can discover. Like there's the Mob, Mob Museum, since a lot of um, different mobs used to run Las Vegas and other things like that. So what you can do, there's a lot of things to do in Vegas, depending on what your budget is and what you're looking for. So if you want to look this all up and more, you can look up planning a trip to Las Vegas. A lot of websites will have a three-day excursion that you can enjoy. This means it'll be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Typically, that's what people do. And then you can also find some fun things to do with the kids, some fun, some fun things to do with grandchildren, other things like that. The Las Vegas is a place now where everybody can enjoy some fun. Um, and then of course you can gamble and you can drink and you can do all that fun stuff. Las Vegas is also very well known in movies like The Hangover, um, other things like that. So you can go see all those sites where The Hangover was filmed um, and you can do all that fun stuff and more. So, one, so other than that, I have nothing really else to add. Um, once again, my name is Brandon Faulkner. Please make sure to visit our, our website, uh, villagecore.com, or subscribe to our YouTube channel at VillageCore uh, to keep up to date with all the events that we have um, and to keep up to date with any future or past videos that we have posted. Once again, thank you so much for watching.